Nope, I guess we're working inside. Today, we are ditching the plans and we are embracing the freedom of building as we go. Let's go. This DIY storage shelf system ain't gonna build itself. And yes, I did just say ditch the plans. Now, guys, I wanna fully acknowledge that there are a lot of situations where having a solid plan is essential, if not an absolute must. And I'm not dismissing that. However, there are also times when freedom to improvise and explore creativity is absolutely invaluable. Working on a piece just like this back carport provides the perfect opportunity for me to flex my creative muscles and adaptability without the fear of major repercussions if things don't go as planned. Planned. It's about finding the balance between structure and spontaneity, knowing when to follow a plan and when to embrace the freedom of innovation. Think about it. Would you like to be a guitarist who can't play without sheet music? Or do you want to unleash your inner rock star and riff off the chords of your own creativity? Or it's like a sculptor working on a block of clay, no predetermined form, only the raw material waiting to be shaped by the artist's hands. Building without plans isn't about flying blind. It's about tapping into that fundamental knowledge and trusting your instincts to guide you through the process. Just like a skilled woodworker who can craft a masterpiece without blueprints, you too can become a master of improvision and adaptability. So are you ready to break free from the constraints of plans and unlock your full potential as a DIY builder? Well, join us on this journey of discovery and let's build something awesome. Let's build some storage shelves together. Remember, the only limitation is your imagination. So let's get started. First, let's start by tidying up the area. And while I'm cleaning up, it's important to note that the wall where I'll be installing the shelf system has an uneven floor underneath, sloping away from the shop. This matters because we can't make our legs just quite yet. Additionally, you'll notice that an electrical panel is on the right hand side, affecting the dimensions of the bottom shelf compared to the upper shelf. Now, with the two x four cleat stud, we'll secure it to the wall, attaching it to the foot plate to help you figure out where the studs are. Common wall plank on the exterior of the buildings typically have screws or nails that will allow you to see where the studs are underneath. If you're, if you're doing this from the inside of a building with exposed walls, then you know exactly where to put your cleats. Or if you have drywall, then you'll want to use a stud finder. In the shop, I'll cut the support studs to the desired length and add pocket holes for joinery, attaching them to the cleat and the shelf board. Now, as we look at the spacing, you can see that it's 24 on center to 24. And if I were to do 24, it would be right here. But the reality is, is that it would make it too close to the end. So what I did is I took that overall space and I divided that in half, which made this one right here. And that's also why it looks a little bit off-sided or, or uneven. But now, now we're going to take that bottom shelf. We're going to install it into the cleat itself. Just a reminder that we got, we know where the studs are, so we're gonna be anchoring them down into that. We're gonna be using a level here. One, the shelf is level, and then we'll put the legs on temporarily before we paint them. And now we're gonna just take a measurement for that second shelf, and then also add that in to the wall. And again, we're gonna rinse and repeat as far as what the shelf is concerned. You guys don't need to see that. So that one we just did off camera. We're gonna insert that, figure that one out as far as the legs are concerned. Now those bottom legs, we're gonna actually just put a coat of paint on it so that we can make sure that there's no moisture uh, migrating from the concrete up into it. And then we added some OSB or uh, strand board on that. And we're gonna just uh, fix it on each of the corners just to keep it in place. Now, as far as the legs for the second shelf, with that one, we measured it, got it level, and then cut it down to size. And then we now attached it before we add that top uh, OSB board on it. Now, if we wanted to, at this point, we could honestly just call it good and 
add the totes to this uh, to the shelf. But for me, I want to take it a step further. And I love actually utilizing these L brackets and the I beams to kind of create these floating bin like, like effects. And if you want to see how I actually made the L beams and the I beams, please check out this other video. I'll have link that goes over my tote tower. It goes over exactly how to make those. And I absolutely just love these things. What I'm doing is I'm actually preparing the holes with the screws so I can put them up there. And then you're gonna see, I'm gonna add four playing cards to create as almost like spacer shims to know exactly where to put it. I'll put it in place and then I'll attach them in. And then when I actually pull out the tote, you notice the cards will fall out, we'll collect them. And then that way I've got roughly about an eighth of an inch on both sides of, of, of those things so that the um, totes can kind of have a little bit of spare space in there. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing just on the mirror opposite side. So now we're gonna do the exact same thing. Notice we have the L-beam on the outermost side. And we're gonna put that up and then we're gonna actually put the I-beam uh, more towards the center. Again, using those four cards as spacers, we're putting them up. This way we can guarantee that we're gonna have a fit of these, uh, I believe they're 17 gallon totes that are the smaller ones versus the 27 gallon totes, which are the bottom ones. So once that's in, then I'm gonna actually check for the center. And with this, here's one of the things we talked about earlier is pivoting. Notice for me that center space that I'm about to get to is actually too large for the totes to actually fit. So what I actually had to do in order to make that work is I took an extra I-beam and I put it in there to make it fit to size. And now what I'm doing off scene is I'm actually grabbing that. You're gonna notice I'm gonna put another I-beam in there, which really I, I don't necessarily need that part in the space, but you're gonna see a little bit later. Um, I use a Templar sword that I actually store in there. So we're gonna put this all together. When it comes to tote storage and specifically one like this, here's some things I wanna offer as just some suggestions. One, when you're doing it, it's oftentimes difficult to know what's inside of your bins. So a lot of times you'll see individuals that will come up with using the clear bin so that they can see inside. But here's the honest truth. If you fill one of these up with miscellaneous or small items, the center of that pile, you're not gonna see it even if it's clear or not. So I have a much better suggestion for you as far as organizing inside your totes First of all, I like the black so it conceals it. You don't have to worry about the mess. Aesthetically, it looks good. But now, getting back to my main topic, you guys might be wondering, what are these things that I'm using right here? These are actually QR codes that are gonna, well, you know what, better yet, why don't you do this? Check out this video up here. It'll go through the complete how to use these QR codes, and it is way cheaper and easier than you think. And that way, the barrier of having a clear tote you have to be here to physically inspect it. This thing that I'm gonna show you, you can remotely access exactly, not only what's in it, but the quantity of it from anywhere in the world under the assumption that you have internet connection. With that being said, have a great day, you guys. We'll talk to you later. And shoot dang. This was a good one.